Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, today we will study the second epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Corinthians from the King James Version Bible. Yes, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord Jesus Christ, lead us and guide us. Beloved, the book of Second Corinthians, since Paul's first letter, the Corinthian church had been swayed by false teachers who stirred the people against Paul. They claimed he was fickle, proud, unimpressive, and in appearance and speech dishonest and unqualified as an apostle of Jesus Christ. But Paul sent Titus to Corinth to deal with these difficulties and upon his return rejoiced to hear of Corinthians' change of heart. Paul wrote these letters to express his thanksgiving for the repentant majority and to appeal to the rebellious ministry and to appoint his authority. Throughout the book, he defends his conduct, character and calling as an apostle of Jesus Christ. To distinguish this epistle from 1 Corinthians, it is given the title Pros Corinthians B, the second to the Corinthians. The A and B were probably later additions to Pros Corinthios. Yes, as we see the Pros Corinthios B, that is the second to the Corinthians, the book of Second Corinthians. Yes, beloved. Now, let us try to understand the author of Second Corinthians. External and the internal evidence as apply the support, the imply the support, the Pauline authorship of this letter. As with Romans, the problem of Second Corinthians is with its lack of unity, not with its authorship. Many critics theorize that chapters 10 to 13 were not a part of this letter in its original form because their tone contrasts with that of chapters 1 to 9. It is held that the sudden change from a spirit of joy, yes, and comfort to a spirit of concern and self-defense points to a scene between two different letters. Many hypotheses have been advanced to explain the problem, but the most popular is that of chapter 10 to 13, belong to a lost letter, referred in chapter 2, verse 4. Several problems arise with these attempts to dissect 2 Corinthians chapter 10 to 13. Do not fit Paul's description of a lost letter of 2 chapter verse 4 because they are firm but not sorrowful and because they do not refer to the offender about whom that letter was written. Chapter 2 verse 5 to 11. Also, this earlier matter material would have been appended at the beginning of 2 Corinthians, not at the end. There is simply no external manuscripts, church, yes, the father's tradition or the internal basis for challenging the unity of this epistle. The difference in tone between 1 to 9 and 10 to 13 is easily explained by the change of focus from the repentant majority to the rebellious minority. Let us try to understand the time of 2 Corinthians. The part of the background of 2 Corinthians can be found in the time of 1 Corinthians. Paul was in Ephesus when he wrote 1 Corinthians and expected Timothy to visit Corinth and return to him. As we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 10 to 11 and 13. Yes. Timothy apparently brought Paul a report of their position that had developed against him in Corinth and Paul made a brief and painful visit to the Corinthians. This visit is not mentioned in Acts 
but it can be interfered from as we see inferred from 2nd Corinthians 2 verse 1, 12 verse 14, 13 verses 1 and 2. This can be in fair read. Upon returning to Ephesus, Paul regretfully wrote his sorrowful letter to urge the church to discipline the leader of the opposition, as we see in chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 and 7 to 8. Titus carried this letter. Paul, anxious to learn the results, went to Traus and then to Macedonia to meet Titus on his return trip, as we see in chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, and 7, verse, chapter 7, verses 5 to 16. Paul was greatly relieved by Titus' report that the majority of Corinthians had repented of their rebelliousness against Paul's apostolic authorship, authorship and authority. Yes, however, a minority opposition still persisted, evidently led by a group of Judaizers, chapter 10 to 13. There is Macedonia, Paul's wrote Second Corinthians and sent it with Titus and another brother, as we see in chapter 8, verses 16 to 24. This took place late in AD 56, and Macedonian city from which it was written may have been Philippi. Paul then made his trip, the third trip to Corinth, that is chapter 12, 14, and also we see in 13, 1 to 2 and Acts chapter 20 verses 1 to 3, where he wrote his letters to the Romans. There is an alternate view that the anguish letter of chapter 2 verse 4 and 7 verse 8 is in fact the first Corinthians and not a lost letter. Yes, beloved, this would require that the offender of second Corinthians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11 and 7 verses 12 be identified with the offender of first corinthians 5 now let us try to understand the christ of second corinthians christ is presented as the believer's comfort as we see in chapter 1 verse 5 triumph as we see in chapter 2 verse 14 as we see he is the lord in chapter 4 verse 5 light as we see in chapter 4 verse 6 judge as we see in chapter 5 verse 10 reconciliation as we see in chapter 5 verse 19 and substitute as we see in chapter 5 verse 21 gift as we see in chapter 9 verse 15 and owner as we see in chapter 10 verse 7 and power as we see in chapter 12 verse 9 yes beloved as we are trying to understand the book of 2 Corinthians. It has the blessings as we read the book of 2 Corinthians. Yes, beloved, as we study the survey of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians describes the anatomy of an apostle. The Corinthian church has been swayed by false teachers who have stirred the people against Paul, especially in response to the first Corinthians. Paul's disciplining letter, the disciplining letter of Paul throughout this letter, second Corinthians, as it is Paul's disciplinary letter. Paul defends his apostolic conduct, character and call. The three major sections are Paul's explanation of his ministry as we see in chapter 1 to 7, Paul's collection for the saints as we see in chapter 8 and 9, and Paul's vindication of his apostleship as we see in chapter 10 to 13. Paul's explanation of his ministry as we see in chapter 1 to 7. After his salutation and thanksgiving, 
for God's comfort in his afflictions and perils. Chapter 1 verses 1 to 11. Paul explains why he has delayed his plan visit to Corinth. It is not a matter of vacillation. The apostle wants them to have enough time to repeat as we see they have enough time to repent as we see in chapter 1 verses 12 and 2 verses 4. Paul graciously asked them to restore the repentant offender to fellowship as we see in chapter 2 verses 5 to 13 and at this point Paul embarks on the extended defense of his ministry in terms of his message, circumstances, motives and conduct as we see in chapter 2 verses 14 and 6 verses 10. He then admonishes the believers to separate themselves from defilement that is chapter 6 verses 11 and 7 verses 1. The expresses of his comfort at Titus news of their change of heart as we see in chapter 7 verses 2 to 16. Paul's collection of for the saints as we see in chapter 8 and 9. This is the longest discussion of the principles and the practice of giving in the New Testament. The example of Macedonians liberal giving for the needy brethren in Jerusalem as we see in chapter 8 verses 1 to 6 is followed by an appeal to the Corinthians to keep their promise by doing the same as we see in chapter 8 verses 7 and 9 verses 15. In this connection Paul commends the messengers he has sent to Corinth to make arrangements for the large gift they have promised. Their generosity will be more than imply, rewarded by God. Now Paul's vindication of his apostleship as we see in chapter 10 to 13, Paul conducts this epistle with the defense of his apostolic authority and credentials that is directed to the still rebellious minority in the church, Corinthian church. His meekness in their presence in no way diminishes his authority as an apostle as we see in chapter 10. To demonstrate his apostle credentials, Paul is forced to boast about his knowledge, integrity, accomplishment, sufferings, visions and miracles as we see in chapter 11 verses 1 and also in 12 to verses 13. Yes, he reveals his plans to visit them for the third time and urges them to repent so that he will not have to use the severity when he comes as we see in chapter 12 verse 14 and 13 verse 10. The letter ends with the exhortation, greetings and benediction as we see in chapter 13 verses 11 to 14. Now as we try to understand the outline of 2 Corinthians, the first part is Paul's explanation of his ministry that is chapter 1 verses 1 to 7 verse 16. Part 2 has the Paul's collection for the saints chapter 8 verses 1 and 9 to 15. The third part is Paul's vindication of his apostleship chapter 10 verses 1 to 13 verse 14. And as we see the benediction as we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 14. The beautiful verse beloved it says the grace of Yeshua Masiha, the love of a living God. Yes, Abayava and the communion of Holy Spirit be with you all always. Yes, Lord of mighty God we serve and also it teaches us the various aspects of the readiness of giving as we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Yes, beloved, it is saying and also and God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you always have all sufficiency 
in all things may have an abundance for every good work as we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 yes beloved and the word where God is speaking to us yes yes he has confidence in us beloved as we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 16 it says therefore I rejoice that I have confidence in you in everything yes beloved let us take out at least half an hour and read the word of God the Bible every day it is the manna to our soul as we eat the food beloved so also our soul is hungry for the word of God yes as we read in Psalm 42 verse 2 it says my soul thirsts for thee for the living God yes beloved Jesus Christ is the living waters John 4 10 he is the manna to our soul beloved the words are true as we read the mighty word yes and also he is the light of the world John 8 12 yes beloved so the Bible it is the roadmap of life yes he is the omnipotent God who reigns as we read in Revelation 19 verse 6 and the words are true as we read in Psalm 121 it says I lift up my eyes to the hills from whence does my help come from my help comes from the Lord who is the maker of heaven and earth he will not let your foot be moved behold he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep the Lord is your keeper the Lord is your shade on your right hand the sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night the Lord will keep you from all evil he will keep your life the Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore hallelujah remember beloved there are 20,000 chariots for each one of us as we read in Psalm 68 verse 18 so let us bless his name for he daily loads us with benefits the words are true as we read in Psalm 68 verse 19 yes whatever is our request today let us go in his presence boldly and put ourselves in the front of Lord Jesus Christ he will answer our prayer for the words are true beloved which says in Psalm 65 yes verse 24 as we yet speaking he will hear and as we pray he will answer the words are true beloved and nothing can stop what God has ordained for you as we read in Isaiah yes 14 verse 27 yes beloved and as we read in Matthew chapter 28 it says he has every power and authority yes beloved Jesus Christ has every power and authority and also the evil spirits and demons shudder in the name of Yeshua Messiah yes the winds and the waves obey him yes and also he is able to change our life he is able to bless us abundantly receive the blessings in the name of Yeshua Messiah for the word says to you and to me in blessings I will bless you as we read in Genesis 22 verse 17 and God will provide all our needs the words are true as we read in Genesis 22 verse 14 he will provide us the food water bread money that we require today yes beloved he will bless us with peace in our house for he is our Emmanuel God with us he's a Ebenezer yes God will help us he is our banner he's a issue see as we read in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 10 yes he will provide all our good hearts desire the desire of a heart whatever is there he will provide it as we read in Psalm 37 for the verse says when will this happen this will happen as we read in 1 John 3 22 when he, we keep his commandments and also when we obey him yes beloved and also when we do what is pleasing in his sight for there will be showers of blessing in your house and my house as we read in Ezekiel 36 yes and also 34 verse 26 and the word says the land which is barren will be garden of Eden the words are true yes I am a witness of it as we read in Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 34 yes beloved all our good wishes and desires Jesus Christ will help us to get it yes as it says in John 15 verse 7 when we abide in him and his words abide in us whatever we desire yes he will give it to us yes he is a mighty God beloved remember that there is nothing impossible with a living God as we read in Matthew 19 26 Luke 1 37 my dear sister my dear brother wipe away those tears as we read in Revelation we read the mighty word in chapter 10 verse 7 yes it says 
as we read in Revelation, it speaks to us. Yes, he is the salvation, beloved. Yes, he will wipe away our every tear. He will lead us to the living waters and also he will be a shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The words are true as we read in Psalm 23 verse 1. So whatever is our request, let us put it, put it up in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. The words are true as we read in Micah 7 verse 7. I will look to the Lord and also I will wait for him and he will answer my prayer. Yes, beloved, he is a prayer answering God. The words are true. He is not, he's not a God of the dead, but the God of living and all live to him. The words are true as we read the mighty word. It is speaking to you and to me. Hallelujah. As we read the mighty word from Luke chapter 20 verse 38. He will provide all our needs, beloved. He will bless you with the employment, my dear brother, my dear sister. Yes, the words are true for the word says in Joel 2, 19 to 27. As we read the mighty word, it says, I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten and you shall not be put to shame. You shall not be put to shame. The words are coming twice. The words are true, beloved. It is saying, yes, you shall never be put to shame. You shall never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Also, he will bless us with the strength and the, with the peace as we read in Psalm 29. And also, the words are true, beloved. He comes riding on the heavens on the excellency of the clouds to help you and me. As we read in Deuteronomy 33, verse, it is speaking in 27. Yes, and also let us wear the armor of God and be ready for the word says, for the devil is prowling outside a house. As we read the mighty word, it is speaking to us from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Yes, beloved, the words are true. Let us wear the armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the sword of the Old Testament, New Testament, King James Version, Bible, and shoes or sandals of gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Let us be ready and be victorious in life, for the victory rests with the mighty God. Remember this word as we read the mighty word. It is speaking, yes, in Proverbs 21, verse 31. Yes, and he's already gone ahead of us and he's already sent us. As we read in Judges, yes, the words are true, beloved. Yes, he has already gone ahead of us. Yes, beloved. Judges 4.14 and Judges 6.14. Yes, and also 1 Shamil 17.47 says, the battle is the Lord's. Yes, beloved. So he's there with us and he will lead us victoriously. Hallelujah. Whatever is our request, even for the children, for all of us, for the youth, he will bless us with wisdom, for he is the fountain of wisdom. The words are true, beloved. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God, that give it to all men, liberally, and abridge not. James 1 verse 5. And the words are true, my dear sister, my dear brother, he will wipe away our every tear. Revelation 7 verse 17. Yes, beloved. So be encouraged and also be victorious in life. Seize the day. For this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And remember, you are not orphan. As we read in John 14, it says in verse 18, He will not leave us orphans. Yes, beloved. For be victorious in life. Yes. For, yes, our loving God, Jesus Christ, is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. So be strong, be courageous, and fear the not. Yes. For I am with thee as... Jesus Christ, a living God, is there with us. And also the word is speaking to you and to me from Isaiah 41 verse 10. Yes, fear the not, for I am with thee. Yes, beloved. 365 times it is written in the Bible, fear, fear thou not, fear thou not. Yes. So do like and subscribe the channel, Arise and Shine, as Arise and Shine is the message for you and me as we read in Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1, beloved. Yes, and also the prophecy for this year is that we read in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. He knows our thoughts and he has plans of future hope, prosperity, welfare and peace for you and me. So let us be victorious in life. Hallelujah. Yes, do like and subscribe the channel Arise and Shine, Alfred Rathod and Family USA. This is Dr. Mrs. Alfred James Rathod speaking for the channel. Yes, God bless you and also 
be victorious in life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.